We stumble upon this church after passing through the busy streets of Piazza Navona or those of San Luigi dei Francesi or Sant'Ustacchio, maybe having a quick coffee. And we come upon this facade which is built from the travertine from the Colosseum. Welcome back to Crux Stationalis. Today we find ourselves at the Roman Station Church of the Basilica di Sant'Agostino, the church dedicated to St. Augustine in Rome. This church, however, is not the original Roman Station Church for this Saturday after Ash Wednesday. Rather, there was a church which stood near here under the title of St. Trifon. The basilica is known for its Roman Renaissance architecture style, with artwork by artists such as Caravaggio, Raphael, Gricino, and Bernini. It is also the burial place of St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine of Hippo. The Order of St. Augustine was founded in the year 1244, and its first church and monastery were the ones of Santa Maria del Popolo, next to the Porta del Popolo on the Roman Wall. The friars of the newly founded mendicant order, however, desired to have their main house closer to the Pope and the administration of the church. Pope Honorius IV, however, only authorized the construction of a new monastery near the church of St. Trifon, because a new church would be too close to that original church. The relics, which were preserved in the original church of St. Trifon, are still preserved at Sant'Agostino. These relics are exposed on the evening of this Saturday during Lent for the faithful to venerate. These are the remains of Saints Trifon, Respicius, and Nympha, along with many other relics which are also exposed. Here we find ourselves in the chapel of Saint Augustino, Saint Augustine. Many of us know the story of Saint Augustine, or at least that he was late in his conversion. I wish to read a quote from him before going on to speak about Saint Monica, his mother the one who shed so many tears in expectation of his conversion. St. Augustine wrote, Late have I loved you, O beauty ever ancient, ever new. Late have I loved you. You were within me, but I was outside, and it was there that I searched for you. In my unloveliness I plunged into the lovely things which you created. You were with me, but I was not with you. Created things kept me from you. Yet if they had not been in you, they would have not been at all. You called, you shouted, and you broke through my deafness. You flashed, you shone, and you dispelled my blindness. You breathed your fragrance on me. I drew in breath, and now I pant for you. I have tasted you, now I hunger and thirst for more. You touched me, and I burned for your peace. Now let us turn to the life of St. Monica. St. Monica was an early North African Christian saint and mother of St. Augustine of Hippo. She lived from the years 332 to 387. She is revered for her outstanding Christian virtues, particularly the suffering caused by the infidelity of her husband, and her prayerful life dedicated to the reformation and conversion of her son, who wrote extensively of her pious acts and life with her in his confessions. Christian piety recalls Monica weeping every night for her son, Augustine. When younger, Augustine fell ill, and Monica pleaded her husband to have Augustine baptized. But her husband withdrew his consent when the boy recovered. But Monica's relief at Augustine's recovery turned to anxiety as he misspent his renewed life being wayward and, as he himself says, lazy. In the course of his studies, he embraced a Manichaean form of thought, which promotes a dualism, this struggle between good and evil, inequality between them. 
we can hear in the writing that I quoted of St. Augustine the change of his thought in this regard. For he says, The lovely things kept me far from you, though if they did not have their existence in you, they had no existence at all. And so we see that evil does not have this equal bearing with good. A thought which was embraced by Manichaeism, which taught that life in this world is unbearably painful and radically evil, and that the only thing that frees us from this is a Gnostic knowledge, a knowledge which escapes from the wickedness of creation, the wickedness of our bodies. And that's the folly of dualism. Rather, in Catholic thought and faith, we embrace the fullness of the human person, body and soul, created in the image and likeness of God as good. St. Augustine, having fallen into the errors of Manichaeism, returned home and shared his views to Monica. She drove him away from her table. However, she is said to have experienced a vision that convinced her to reconcile with him. An unnamed bishop also consoled her with the words, The child of those tears shall never perish. Monica followed her wayward son to Rome, where he had gone secretly. When she arrived, he had already gone to Milan, but she followed him there too. Here she found Ambrose, and through him she ultimately saw Augustine convert to Christianity after 17 years of resistance. Monica and her son spent six peaceful months near Milan, after which Augustine was baptized by Ambrose in the church of St. John the Baptist. Monica and Augustine left for Africa, and they set out on their way, stopping at Civitavecchia and at Ostia. There Monica died, and Augustine's grief inspired his confessions. We enter this church, this basilica of Sant'Agostino, and what we sense is a mother's solicitude, a mother's love, that of St. Monica for Augustine, that of Our Lady for us, that of our own earthly mothers, however imperfect it may be in this fallen world. And women and mothers flock to this statue of Our Lady. The Virgin seated on the throne with the child standing on his left leg, surrounded by innumerable votive offerings following the miracles which had been accomplished. Out of popular devotion since the early 19th century, this Madonna and child was considered the protector of women in childbirth, so much so that it took that very name, the Madonna of Childbirth. In 1822, Pope Pius VII as evidenced by the inscription placed upon the base of the statue, granted an indulgence to anyone who came to Our Lady with trust, kissed her foot, and entrusted to her their cares. Thank you for joining us today at Crux Stationalis for our visit to the Roman Station Church of Sant'Agostino. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet already, like this video, and hit that notification bell. Share with your friends so that no one misses out on this Roman Station Church itinerary. May God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow.